Jason and I are taking a hop across the channel to La Belle France. Au revoir, Angleterre. And we're travelling in style, testing out the most powerful Grand Tourers currently on sale. <laughs> GTs are designed to combine opulence and performance on long transcontinental journeys. <laughs> but before we go any further, let's introduce these two beauties. They are the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera and the Ferrari 812 Superfast. If anything can whisk you across continents, in the blink of an eye and in supreme style, it's these two. They come from two of the world's most celebrated car makers, possess looks to die for, gorgeous interiors and boast truly staggering performance figures. For example, both punch out in excess of 700 horsepower and both will top out at a mouth-watering 211 miles per hour. So, we want to find out if these cars really are the ultimate supercruisers and of the pair, which is best. I will start with the Ferrari. I've got the Aston then. We've got three tests lined up, starting with road manners. Now, there is a lot to talk about with this car, but before I get into details like specification, luxury, ride, comfort, etc., I need to get the power figures off my chest because under that long bonnet in front of me is a 6.5 litre, normally aspirated V12 engine with 800 horsepower. Oh, yeah. And it sounds like this. <laughs> It is the most powerful engine Ferrari has ever fitted to one of its full production models. It'll hit 62 miles an hour in 2.9 seconds and 125 miles an hour in under 8 seconds. It is truly mental and I am loving it so far. So, was I getting equally excited in the Aston? Now, like the 812, the Superleggera is the most powerful production car that Aston Martin have ever made. But can it compete with the Ferrari? Well, not quite. It's only got a 5.2 litre V12 up front. And although Aston has then strapped on two big turbochargers, the result is only 725 horsepower. So do I feel a bit shortchanged? No. So I think we've established that neither car skimps in the power department. But what do they like to spend time in on a long trip? The fit and the finish and the design in here is just exquisite. There is a lot of carbon fibre, leather and Alcantara, and it all matches beautifully. It makes me feel like I'm in a luxurious quality machine. The seat is good, it's comfortable. However, I have to slide it manually. What? No electric? You'd expect basic electrics like this on a car costing 40 grand, let alone 200 plus. So, would JP detect any penny pinching in the Aston? There's no denying, this is beautifully finished inside. You know, the leather work, the stitching is lovely. I could imagine being in here all day, actually, and I'd feel good at the other end. GTs are all about luxury, but even these quarter of a million pound cars have optional extras. The list price of the Aston is 225 grand and the Ferrari 263. But these particular cars cost more than that, a lot more. Are you sitting down? Right, so we're having an option off. <laughs> on. You've got to guess my options, okay, babe. Cool. How much do you think that little carbon bonnet grill might be? 1,500 quid. Two grand. Oh, OK, yeah. It's a lot of money, isn't it? I know. This is called triaxial quilting on Ooh, the seat. I'm going for £5,000. £1,995. Just £2,000? Just the £2,000. Well, I'd, I'd take that, sir. Right, so this roof in <laughs> carbon... Yeah. That's three grand's worth, that. £3,000. But do you know that's that ribbed for pleasure there? £1,500. quid. Two grand. That's five grand's worth of kit just there. Yeah. Right, I've got 50 grand's worth of options. I've got two pages worth, babe. So I'm going to pick out black ceramic exhaust pipes. 600 quid? 960. Carbon fibre inner door handle. Just that piece? Yeah. And on the other side? 600 quid. <gasps> 2,400. What? <laughs> You're joking, yeah. man. Just that? Yeah. How much have you got in options on this, then? Well, this started life at 263,000. Right. This particular one. 350. Best by 90 grand's worth of options. Yeah. Shall we swap? 
Oh, can we? Yes, of course. Oh, I thought I was in that all day. Oh, did you? Oh, come here, you. <laughs> So, back on the roads of northern France, and time for my first impression of the Ferrari. <laughs> Man, what a car! Yes, it's a little bit harsher over some of the bumps than the Aston. You'd get out of that after doing 200 miles and feel fresher than you would in this. But you'd have much more fun in this. Meanwhile, I just wasn't warming to the Aston. <laughs> I have got a real disconnect with this car. The noise isn't penetrating my ears. The sensation through the wheels, through the seats, through the pedals is not instant enough. It's not penetrating my soul. There's a delay. It doesn't tell me when it's quite going to go, and then it goes. God, every car should have an engine like this. It's insane, isn't it? Please, can I have my Ferrari back? So, the Aston might be a touch more comfortable on a long drive, but the sheer brutality of the Ferrari makes it the more desirable road car for us, and therefore it wins test one.